Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to start with Unit 1, Page 1. Uh, the very first thing that they shows you is the Dictionary of Terms. Uh, we're not going to sit here and go over every single term or what they mean, but we will go over them as they come up. Um, but it's very important that you know where you can find these terms and start to understand what they mean. Um, as you will go further in your career, you need to know these terminologies and what they actually mean. That way when you're talking to an engineer, when you're you know, talking to a blueprint designer, um, when you're looking at a blueprint or an assembly drawing yourself, you understand what it's telling you. Uh, certain things like allowance and tolerance, while they sound very similar and they are very close to meaning the same thing, they're not the same thing. So that is why it is very important to know the difference between tolerance and allowance. So you need to know these things. Uh, another thing is to understand the difference between an assembly drawing and a schematic. You don't want to be talking about, hey, where's the schematic for this? They hand you something and it's not at all what you're looking for. So knowing what you're asking for or knowing what you're talking about is very important. The next thing is understanding abbreviations. Uh, what's the importance of abbreviations is that they are a space saver. Uh, if you could imagine something like writing out the word aluminum every time that you were trying to talk about it, you could imagine that it's pretty spacey, you know, it uses up a lot of space really quickly. So instead of using aluminum, they use AL. Same thing for the word tolerance. Instead of writing it out every time, they just put T-O-L. You have other things like AWS or the American Welding Society. Uh, another one is the American Society of Machine Engineering or ASME. Instead of writing out that whole thing, just use the abbreviation, it's a lot quicker. Uh, automatic or just A-U-T-O dot. Um, if you want to write the amount or AMT, there's stuff like that that just by writing the abbreviation it saves time. So you want to understand that. Stuff like uh, if they write out the ID of something is 0 0.5. Well, what does ID mean? Inside diameter. And that's why it's important. They are going to use abbreviations on blueprints, assembly drawings all the time. So understanding what those means are important. The next things that are very important are the lines of an assembly drawing. So the very first thing that we see is I've drawn these up here and there are 13 different lines. The very first one at the very top is typically a thick line that's called your visible line. It is a line that when you look and you see like a square, it is the lines on the outside. Your next one is your hidden line this one right here. That is saying that if you were looking at a drawing and you had a square here, that behind it or something that you can't see, there's something there. Um, a way to look at it is you have this little L shape. Well, depending on what angle you look at it, It might just look like that. And the hidden line, which is coming from behind it, to give you a hint that something else is there. A hidden line is typically drawn very th with thin lines. The next one is a section line, right here. A uh, section line is typically at a slant or a diagonal. It is normally about a surface that has been cut. Uh, another one is your center line, right here. It's typically drawn for like a point or an axis, uh, something with a circle or round shape, trying to show you where the center of it's going to be. Um, for those who have ever looked at a target, some targets, you'll see something this and that's two 
center lines telling you that right here in the middle is the center. The next two lines is a dimension line and an extension line, and they're typically worked together. And that's these two right here. So your first one, your dimension line, is a long one that goes all the way across. That one is your dimension line. That is the one that says that this item is right here saying that it's nine inches. It's nine inches across. Your extension line is that one right here and on the other side. So instead of writing it on the item, it comes down, goes across and says, hey, this is what it is. That way you don't have all these numbers that are jumbled up on top of each other. Um, it, and it, it's also done typically in a thin line. The next one is your leader line. It's drawn diagonally and it directs a dimension or a note to an area uh, which it applies. So for this one, it typically has a little arrow and it might have a dot. It comes across, comes over, and it says something. For this one, it's saying that the hole is 0.5. Um, but it could tell you comes up, comes over, and it could tell you, hey, you were to use this for oxy fuel cutting. Or that when you do this, that you need to weld with a concave, that you might have to uh, do certain machining afterwards. So that is what this line tells you. The next two is a cutting plane line and a viewing plane line. Now, that's these two right here. Um, the cutting plane line shows where an imaginary cutting takes place to create a sectional view. The next one is a viewing plane line, uh, which is in conjunction with remove, uh, a removed view to show where the view could normally appear. The thing about them is that typically you can switch them. So one might use this as a cutting plane line or someone might be using this as a viewing plane line. Um, so it's very important to kind of understand which one's which. And if they are doing that and you don't understand which one it's meant to do, that's where you go up and you talk to your engineer or you talk to your supervisor. Hey, which one is this? Uh, the next one is a short break line. Typically done in a thick line Kind of just waving what it means is uh, it terminates a view so instead of drawing something out that's you know 40 feet long it might cut it cut it and say hey we're going to skip a couple of feet talk about something right here skip a couple of feet another one is a long break line which is very similar to a short break line but it has more of a thinner line with a zigzag to it and what it's doing is cutting it off and saying, hey, we're just going to skip this much amount. So the difference is, is one's meant for short distance, one's meant for long distance. The next one is a phantom line. And that represents the outline of an adjacent part, um, typically like uh, gears, teeth, threads, um, a spring coil. Um, and it's typically... Uh, represents the alternate position of a given part. So if you kind of think about a swinging device, so say my arm's here, another thing that it could do is it comes down and that was what it would represent. It would represent that this part's moving. Another thing to think about is a piston and an engine because it goes up, comes down, this part goes up and down. And it's representing that this has a different position that it's a mechanical piece and that it moves. The next one is a chain line. Um, and this indicates an area or position of surface that is to receive special treatment. Now if you look here at this one, which is your chain line, and then you look over here at your viewing plane line, you notice that very similar, but that the viewing plane line has this that comes up. You've also noticed that with your hidden line and your phantom line, they're both thin lines, 
They both have dashes in them. But the hidden line is a continuous dash all the way across. Well, the phantom line, the long part, two dashes, then the long part. So that's why it's important to know what these lines represent. Um, the next one is if you see a lot of them that are drawn at a diagonal, that they're, you know, so there's a lot of different dashes, but it's not a hidden line, which is a straight line going across. So when you're looking at section lines and stuff like that, you need to know what they mean.